In this video, we're going to be talking about Sphere Finance, Dystopia, Penrose, Freon, and putting all of this together with the results of the AMA we just had. I took down a bunch of notes. We need to talk. This is absolutely crazy. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Eric here and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day and are doing well. We're just going to go right into it. Sphere Finance, absolutely crazy stuff today. They had an AMA. It's still ongoing. I actually just dipped out of it to make this video and to let you guys know what is happening because some crazy things are about to happen. This is not financial advice. I'm never telling you guys to invest in something. I am personally invested. You guys can follow along in this journey and either laugh or be sad if I make or lose money. So first things first, Sphere Finance, my position, $1,350. I put in about $1,200. And the first thing we need to talk about is the rebase part of Sphere Finance. They do plan on cutting rebases on June 8th. So in about one week from now, we are no longer going to be getting those rebases every 30 minutes. But Sphere Finance is going to become deflationary, meaning that every time there is a revenue or every time there's a buy and sell transaction they're going to use some of that money in order to burn sphere finance what is that going to do if you don't know what that does well basically what that means is that if they burn the token the token is destroyed from the supply which reduces the total supply of sphere finance as you are aware of economics if we have a decreasing supply and we have an increasing demand well what happens to your price your price is going to go up now it's not only going to rely on new investors coming in because as we know sphere finance is working on so many different projects in order to bring revenue into the sphere ecosystem in order to then buy sphere burn it and push the price up and that is also not not even talking about quantum liquidity and them using a USD plus which is overnight finance on top of all of that which is a stable coin with a yield on it so that's on a separate note but basically that's what we need to know about sphere finance in a nutshell before we get into dystopia penrose and prion now, for those of you who are participating in the Sphere games, you may be asking yourself, well, what's going to happen to my beloved Sphere games when there are no longer any rebases? Because as we know, this is how this pool works. There is a small percentage of the Sphere tokens in this pool and it gains rebases and it climbs in value. Now, what's going to happen with this is that a portion of the buy and sell fees are actually going to be feeding into the sphere games, which is then going to increase the amount of sphere tokens in the sphere games. And that's how the pool is going to be generated. So as we know, in order to buy sphere or sell sphere, there is a 13 or 20% tax. So I don't know the percentage that is going to go into the sphere games, but let's just call it 5% and maybe it's 5% percent of the sell tax both of those are going to go into the sphere games pool and then a winner is also going to be drawn now my expectation is that the pool is probably going to be smaller but we're no longer going to be getting rebases so why not participate in this pool for a chance to win some money but again that's not financial advice because if you do participate in this pool or in this game you do have to wait 14 days before you actually exit out and claim your sphere without having a 30 percent withdraw penalty so you guys do what you want with your sphere tokens but now we need to talk about penrose dystopia and prion so if we move on to this picture and we talk about what Simsala was saying during the AMA, he did a phenomenal job explaining all of this. So I took down some notes and let's get right into it. So we are the little DGENs here. We are the purple square user and we are the ones providing liquidity to Dystopia. Now, this is only an example. It could be a different pair, but we are going to keep in mind the USD plus side of things is very important important here because it's actually going to give you more yields because this stable coin is 100% collateralized and it's also a yield bearing stable coin and if you have no idea what USD plus is I made a few videos about it so definitely check that out 
But for the purposes of this example, we're gonna say it's DAI and USD plus. It could be USDC and USD plus. But nonetheless, we are providing this liquidity into Dystopia in order to get that liquidity pool token. And if we head on over to Dystopia, I've actually went ahead and I've provided liquidity to a few different pools just to test out the waters. And I wanted to be receiving the DIS token, which is the reward you get for providing liquidity. So as we can see, I provided liquidity in Raptmatic and USDC. I put in about $500 of both tokens. And if we go on to the reward pool, I have gained about 60 DIS tokens for having provided that liquidity liquidity and now one disc token is worth around seven cents so it's nothing much but still i'm basically getting rewards for providing liquidity on to dystopia now i have staked this liquidity into dystopia and now because penrose isn't out yet but in the case that penrose is out i am going to be unstaking my liquidity from dystopia and then staking that liquidity pool token into penrose so going back to our graphic here, once you've deposited some liquidity into Dystopia, and again, it has to be 50% of each token. So if you're only investing about $500, well, it would be 250 in DAI and 250 in USD+. Now you're gonna get that LP token as I just showed you. I staked that into Dystopia just because Penrose isn't actually available yet. But once Penrose is going to be available, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be taking the liquidity pool token from Dystopia and instead of staking it in Dystopia, I will be staking it into Penrose. Now, why would I want to do this is that Penrose is actually a yield aggregator for Dystopia, meaning that you're going to be earning more yields if you stake on Penrose rather than staking on Dystopia and as well as if you do decide to vest your disc tokens on Dystopia, the lock period is four years, which is obviously not what you want to do if you're just a regular investor like I am. And on Penrose, it is only four months. So it is much more appealing for us investors to use Penrose in order to get more yields on our tokens and also yield some money from Penrose. Now, of course, the loop doesn't stop there. So if you do decide to stake your LP into Penrose, now what happens after that is you can actually get another LP token, which is going to be the Penrose LP token. And what happens after is that you are going to be able to use Prion in order to stake it into Prion. So you're staking your Penrose LP into Prion. And from Prion, you can actually get another stable coin Coin, which they call a PUSD right now, but the name may change. And that is actually something you can leverage. So it's super complicated, but let's go through it again. So let's just say I'm putting a thousand dollars of DAI and USDT, so 500 of both into Dystopia. I'm getting that LP token. Now, once I've done that, instead of staking it in Dystopia, I'm going to take that LP token and I'm going to be staking it on Pen Rose. Now, obviously, when I do that, I get another LP token. I'm earning fees on Pen Rose because I've staked liquidity in it. I've provided liquidity to Pen Rose. But now I can also take that LP token that was generated from Penrose and I can put it into Prion. And from Prion, I can actually leverage those LP tokens. They were talking about eight or nine times, which sounds a bit ridiculous in my opinion. I could essentially be taking out $800 or $900 Again, it depends on the final leverage, but let's just say I'm able to leverage my position eight times over. That would mean that I would be able to take out $800 from Prion in PUSD, which is also a stable coin. And now I could go with that PUSD and do whatever I want. So I could go back into the same loop and then take out more. But of course, if I do that, I'm leveraging myself even more, which is opening up myself to more risks. But something very, very important to note here is that all of these are actual stable coins. So if we go back to the Wonderland time and the Olympus Dow times, 
we actually saw a very similar pattern to this where you were able to leverage your position and actually take out more money as a collateral for that leveraged position and you would be able to go back into that same loop and do it all over again in hopes to make some money now what ended up happening in the case of wonderland we know that the actual token wasn't sustainable and it actually fell off like crazy and people got liquidated because it was paired with mim and wonderland and wonderland wasn't actually a stable coin now in this case here everything are stable coins so you have die you have usd plus which is a stable coin stable coin and you're actually collateralizing all of that or leveraging your stable coins in order to get another stable coin so it may sound a bit crazy at first but if you really go through follow the arrows here it's gonna make sense now i'm not too sure how it's actually going to play out in real life we're still gonna have to wait for penrose and for prion to come out and for this whole system to come out but a few flaws that sim actually pointed out of this cycle here is that of course this is DeFi. this is subject to smart contract exploits because these are all smart contracts doing this and of course if there is a dpeg anywhere in this situation there would be a liquidation so for example let's say prion and the PUSD is dpegged well what would happen then is that everybody who was leveraging a prion would lose their loan and they would basically sell the lp tokens within prion in order to maintain that peg so obviously you may lose some money if it depegs but something else to keep in mind is that sphere finance actually has a huge governance into dystopia and into penrose so what could happen is that if they create a pool with the prion liquidity so PUSD and let's say USDC they have a pool for dystopia they could incentivize that pool and in order to incentivize investors of dystopia to actually provide liquidity on the PUSD USDC into dystopia and basically that would create deeper liquidity for PUSD and that said stable coin. So it is a huge vicious loop and of course we are still going to have to wait and see how this works but the key point here is that these are all stable coins which shouldn't depeg and the other cool thing about USD plus is that it actually is a yield bearing stable coin so you are going to be making money even more money because this token here actually rebases on a daily basis and it gives you even more USD plus now to wrap everything up into sphere and how sphere is actually going to be making money with this there are fees associated through all of these transactions along the way sphere finance also has governance into all of these protocols all of these projects they're going to be generating money what are they going to be doing with that money they're going to be essentially buying back sphere and burning sphere appreciating the price of sphere and as we know because sphere is becoming deflationary and there are no longer any rebases well the only way that sphere can actually stay down is if we have hundreds of thousands of dollars being sold into sphere every single day which i just don't see happening so that's how sphere finances token is going to appreciate in price so i know we talked about a whole lot in this video this is definitely a diagram to keep in the back of your pocket study it understand it and definitely understand a dystopia look out for penrose it is supposed to be coming out shortly then it's going to be prion but with all that being said that's basically what's coming for sphere finance it is super exciting in my opinion if we just take a look at the recent buys on sphere people are pouring in we have 3k we have another 3k 4k and so on and so forth we don't see many sells right now but again it is crypto there are obviously some risks i'm not saying this is risk free I'm just saying that this is what Sphere is working towards to. And best of all, all of this is going to eventually be cross-chain, meaning that this is only on Polygon now, 
But let's say in a year from now, let's say this is on Binance, it's on Phantom, it's on Avalanche, and it's on all of the different chains. I mean, you just see the potential that Sphere is going for. So with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.